I was pulled to the side road, which was uh, uh, a new cut gravel dirt road in front of a business, a builder supply business, actually top-notch builder supply in Madison, Georgia. To my right, this was a, previously was a soybean field, um, and this little new cut road divided this field, and the right side of the road was filled with, uh, which I thought was portable toilets. So I never looked at them that close. Same in color, maybe black, but which was an odd color. And I was sitting there going over my notes, and um, a van pulled alongside of me that turned out to be the property owner. And he greeted me, and he was by himself, and so we had a good little dialogue there, and I asked him about the, the field of black boxes, what, what were they, because uh, I'd never seen anything like that. And uh, and his statement was that if he told me, I would be one of few people in Madison, Georgia, that knew about them. And he says they're they're uh, disposable coffins, I believe he told me. And he says uh, there's a hundred at that time. He said there was 125,000 there. And they were stacked. Uh, he told me 15 high. I asked him uh, who owned them, and he stated that uh, the CDC owned them and that they were leasing the land, leasing his land for storage. And um, he um, said his brother uh, worked with the CDC in Atlanta and had been asked by the CDC to do a three-year extension to place temporary morgues all across the nation. So in January of this year, 2005, we decided to drive to beautiful Madison, Georgia and take a look for ourselves. It was on a Sunday and no one was around, with the exception of this one pickup truck that was coming out the narrow road that we were going in on next to this field. We flagged down the uh, pickup truck and it was providential that the driver of this pickup truck turned out to be the son of the man that owned this field. So naturally we started asking him questions. And he told us that not long ago there had been as many as 500,000 of these grave liners or disposable coffins. We asked him for permission if we could look around and he said yes. So we did. We're just getting a, an idea for the size of these boxes. What could these boxes be used for? Well, they're called casket liners. And that's an interesting term, isn't it? It's a casket liner. When I first heard the term casket liner, I thought perhaps a lighting for a casket. But this is too big to be on the inside of a casket. So Certainly, this could be used as a casket. This is an inexpensive casket. And you can see the size here. There's lots of room. Uh, I think my friends here, we could all probably get inside. It might be a little cozy, but we'd fit just fine. Which tells me that these liners can be used for more than just one. And uh, one more time. What kind of liners are these? Casket um, liners. Cas these are casket liners. That's what... The man said That's it. what the man told us. And we're told that there are about, well, there were about 500,000 out here. Later, as I went back to my home office, I spoke of it there. And, of course, people usually don't want to hear too much about this kind of thing. So it's never been mentioned, uh, you know, publicly, except just here and there, till. I went to a luncheon, a fundraising, a fundraiser for Representative Saxby Chambliss. He was running for his second term for the U.S. House of Representatives. And it was a crowd, probably 100, maybe 150. It was 
congressmen, senators, state senators and mayors. Uh, there was uh, one table we probably had two three-star generals and a couple of one-star with their spouses. So it was a real high-powered meeting. But the uh, keynote speaker was the uh, a congressman, and I, I don't remember his name. He had just been in the House for a long time, and he was the chairman of the Armed Services Committee. Um, and so he just spoke in behalf of Representative uh, Chambliss and the importance of having him on board uh, to be reelected um, due to our uh, threats. But it had to do with the the nuclear devices that was missing from the old Soviet Union and that had gotten into terrorist hands. And it, it was the emphasis was on the the critical state uh, that we face in this country. And he said we could lose tens of millions of people in the next decade, and he used those terms, due to a nuclear strike on U.S. soil. And I was sitting there, and it became very clear to me that that could very well explain why just weeks, I mean, could be two to three weeks prior to that meeting, that I had stumbled upon these, uh, at that time, 125,000 disposable liners or, or caskets or coffins or whatever uh, they could be termed as in that soybean field in Madison, Georgia. Now, what we've just seen is one United States city outside, this is Atlanta, it has a metropolitan population area of roughly 4 million people. So this is one field outside of one U.S. city, uh, one U.S. city, and the brother of the man that owns this field that the government is leasing this field from to store these disposable coffins. This brother has been was given three years to set up temporary morgues around the country. Now we found the website that we think these disposable coffins were made. Uh, at, and we noticed that the lids that they're advertising on the website were rounded. But the lids, hundreds of thousands of lids there, the lids we found, folks, were flat. And they were reinforced. You know what that could mean? You can stack them on top of each other. That's a lot neater to stack them in disposable coffins than what we saw after the tsunami when we would see bulldozers digging holes and taking bodies and pushing bodies into holes. America can stomach this much better.